Good afternoon, scholars. It is now time to begin the debate showcase. Are you guys ready for the debate showcase? Scholars, but before we start, how was lunch? Separated is how lunch was. Capacity is a thing. But before we begin, we must go over a few of the ground rules. First of all, let us remind you that the debaters coming to the stage in just a minute will be eight individuals from eight different countries. These people likely have never met and for sure have never debated together on a team. They have been specifically nominated by your judges yesterday during the debates. So please give them the warm welcomes they deserve as they come to the stage to form these new teams. Scholars and today's judges are amongst us right now. These judges have been nominated yesterday during the debates and they are scholars amongst all of you. However, these judges will be taking their seats in the front row, so if I could kindly ask. The reserved seating over there, the seats marked reserved. In the reserved seating over there, yes. If I could kindly ask for those seats to be Yeah, can we please get this row to move over and find a free spot inside the theater? This is the VIP area. Yes, for the judges that have been nominated yesterday. And now after the debate, we will be hosting a community forum. This community forum is a chance for you to share your ideas with the community here in Sydney. It is not a chance for you to share feedback. We understand that this opinions on stage are not, do not represent all of the opinions here in this audience. So we want to give you this chance to tell us what you think about the motion. And scholars, one more thing is the spirit of this debate showcase. The spirit is meant to be respectful. We have to respect each other and be cautious and constructive. And yes, Logan. Now without further ado, it's time to announce who will be joining us on the stage today. We'll begin with the affirmative team. Your first speaker on the affirmative team joins us from Australia, from Wesley College, Perth. It is Elijah Kanganas. Scholars, and our second speaker joins us from the Bahamas, from Aquinas College, Sierra Sweeting. If you hear your name announced, please join us on stage and bring any of the preparation materials you might need. And now, joining us from the island of Hong Kong, from the Chinese International School of Hong Kong, it is Jessica Poon. Scholars, and joining us from Indonesia, from Mentari Intercultural School, Jakarta, Figo Maherpa Muji. Scholars, make some noise for your affirmative team. And now for the negative team. Your first speaker joining us from Singapore, from St. Joseph's International School, Singapore. It is Dia Jalan. Our second speaker for the negative team, joining us from New Zealand, from St. Andrew's College, Xavier Dickerson. And now coming to the stage, your third speaker is from Myanmar, ready to light up the stage from British School Yangon, it is Julia Than Hlaing. And our fourth speaker for the negative team joins us from Japan, from Kyoshanan Fujiyasu Junior High School, Marina Tanaka. Don't read the school? 
Scholars, give it up for all the speakers on stage. And now, this debate is done by judges and will be by scholars, judged by scholars. So, joining us in the front row are your panelists. Your first panelist is Catherine Corey from Innerborough School. Our second panelist is Thilan An Lai from British Vietnamese International School, Hanoi. Followed by Chak Quan Kevin Huey. Followed by Serena Wang. Also joining us is Jin Grace Guang. Followed by She Xuyen Lung. Coming down is also Chandra Pitch Sai. Joining us is Aria Firuz. Also joining us is Nathanich Mekadanaumporn. Followed by Andrew Hugh Chin. Our next judge is Angela Liu. And we are joined by Anushka Viktrum Bot. Judges, please join us in the front row. Scholars, give it up for your panel of judges. We have an affirmative team. We have a negative team. We have a panel of judges. What are we missing? That is correct. We are indeed missing the motion. Scholars, the motion for today's debate is that the best leaders come from the margins of society. Speakers on stage, you have 15 minutes to prepare. Scholars and time. To start off this debate showcase, I'd like to invite the first speaker for the affirmative team to come up in front. And you have four minutes. Hold it 
Good afternoon, honorable pa panel of judges, very talented teammates, and the more than worthy opposition. My name is Figo from AMISG, and today my team and I will be enforcing the motion that the best leaders come from the margins of society. Yet again, those who are raised without a silver spoon in their mouth are the most capable of feeding. I'll first be defining some words contained within this motion. The first one, we will be defining margins as those who have not been treated the same as the majority, which are the minorities between the global community, those who are less than the majority and live outside of accepted norms. Second being the term best, which means those with the highest approval ratings across the globe through fair voting. Now, I would like to say Obama, Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., and a handful of female leaders, these are the leaders who came up from the margins. These are the leaders who are oppressed, who were treated differently from those who were the majority at the time. The Martin Luther King Jr. was treated different from the whites. Gandhi was, different to, was treated different from the British. Obama was treated different from the whites. And a handful of female leaders who were treated different from the men at their time. These are the people who are more than capable of leading society because they know how it feels to be marginalized. They know how it feels to be at the bottom. They know how it feels to have nothing to help them. But with their hard work, they rised up and they became one of the most memorable leaders ever because of their experience. And experience comes from many things, one of them being being marginalized. These margins, these slums, these oppression, these th margins are the key to, to make, margins are the key to shaping a great leader. This is why the, the greatest leaders of all time are usually coming from margins. These margins, as I defined it as being an oppressed group of minorities, this oppression, this racism, this sexism, everything these people have experienced has all shaped them, body built them, made the base of a very, very strong tower called the great leader. And these are the list of great leaders we have. And, we, and that is why the best leaders come from the margins of society, the margins in between, the, under the majority, under the best, under the elite, these people coming from the bottom. They are the reason some of us have great lives today. They're the reason that they understand the poor because the rich do not understand the poor. The rich cannot, the elite cannot. That's why the people that come from the bottom knows how it feels to be in the bottom. That's why they want to help more than anyone else because they know how bad it feels to, be, to not be cared about. We live in a world where the amount of money we have directly correlates to the amount of people that care about us. And this is unacceptable. That's why leaders with the right mindset, with the right beginning, with the right past, they are the ones most capable of leading, the ones most capable of leading humanity into the great future we deserve. And of course, any one of you can be. You are all bright students. You are all great people. That's our, we are not the margin, but we can come and become leaders. Thank you. Scholars, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you for starting off this debate so well. And debaters, you have one minute to prepare. And your time is up. Scholars, give it up for the first speaker from the negative team. Hello, respected judges, esteemed opponents, and the audience. My name is Marina Tanaka. I'm from SFC Junior High School in Japan, and I will be the first speaker for the negative side. The motion was that great leaders come from the margins, and we as the negative side strongly disagree. Now, we agree on the definition of the margins, so I'm gonna jump into my rebuttals. The first speaker of the affirmative side stated that the rich people don't understand the poor, and that's simply not true. Look at Bill Gates. He was born into middle class, he was born rich, and he is the richest person on earth right now, but he donated 99% of all of his money to charity, and he is helping with developing countries. He is really making a difference in our world. Does that really really support his statement that the rich do not understand the poor. And he made many good statements, I admit, but he didn't really go into the analysis. He didn't go into any details, so I would like to see that more. Now, going into my point, 
Leaders are the most important people in any nation. They are ultimately the ones to make the decisions that could make or break a nation. And who becomes a leader is something that we are all interested in. So are the greatest leaders always coming from the margins? That's not necessarily true. Let's take a look at the leader of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern. And as we've seen on the Scholars Bowl today, New Zealand was the first country to legalize women's right to vote. Isn't that a great thing for us ladies? And not being a leader from the margins doesn't mean that you won't care about the issues that surround marginalism. Leaders automatically have the obligation to look out for everybody. If they don't, they will get terrible immediate backlash from everybody in the nation, all the citizens. Rather, won't they make better leaders because they come from the majority? Marginalized people tend to have some kind of suppressed anger against the majority because they come from the margins. I, as an Asian in the United States, which is full of white supremacy, have kind of, you know, a little bit of anger towards the white people because I'm not them. They kind of made fun of me sometimes, and I didn't, definitely did not like that. So who wants a leader that only thinks for their group and not everybody? So. Because the marginalized people have come some anger towards the majority, they would only look out for the marginalized people. They have some sort of bias or prejudice against the people. Leaders from the majority are able to look out for everybody because they come from the majority. They are able to treat people as equals, treat everybody in the nation as one, as one nation. And during the process of this debate, the second speaker in the negative side will be able to give up some more points. And I hope that we will be able to prove to you that it is completely false that great leaders all have to come from marginalized places. Thank you. Thank you very much. Affirmative team, you have one minute to prepare. All right, scholars, can we give a huge round of applause for our second affirmative speaker? You have four minutes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, honorable judges and worthy opponents. I am Jessica from Chinese International School in Hong Kong, and the, I will be the second speaker of the affirmative side debating that the best leaders come from the margins of society. So I will begin with offering a few rebuttals to the negative side. You mentioned that rich people do understand the poor. They may understand, but have they truly ever experienced having to um, live in these marginalized areas? No, even Bill Gates, as you mentioned, he was born rich. He never suffered under the oppression that these marginalized peoples face. So although he may provide a lot of opportunities for these people, he still cannot relate to them. He cannot share with them. He cannot fully represent the ideas that they may have. Furthermore, marginalized people provide a new perspective. As a member of a marginalized society, imagine seeing someone of your community standing in power and be able to represent your voice and your race. Also, as you mentioned, as the um, first speaker of the negative side mentioned, um, as an Asian living in the US, she does feel this type of suppressed anger towards white people and how um, the stories of immigrants and everything. But why? Why does she feel that way? Think about the president currently in America. He is the person stopping the immigration coming from Mexico, stopping causing all of these problems. No wonder why you feel marginalized in the communities that you live in. Because there is a leader from the majority that is in power currently that are making people feel suppressed. Thank you. Furthermore, I would like to mention that the best leaders have a high consideration factor. They really care about their people. And what more can a marginalized leader do than care about their people? Um, they create a society that can break past these marginalized barriers because they speak for the oppressed people. They give them a voice and they let them 
create a change in society because we are sick of and tired of living under the leaders that represent the global community when it's the majority, when it's not the marginalized people. Even look at Martin Luther King. He started a revolution that gave a voice to people that were oppressed. It gave a voice and it stopped the silence. And that is what we stand for. So I believe that the motion that the best leaders should come from the margins of society should stand. Thank you. Thank you very much. Scholars, give her one more round of applause. And debaters, you have one minute to prepare. And time is up. We would now like to welcome to the front of the stage the second speaker from the negative team. Scholars, give it up. Good afternoon. My name is Dia, and I'm from SGI International School in Singapore. And today I'm going to be telling you why the opposition has clearly gotten this debate motion somewhat wrong in a lot of text context, as well as how a lot of their examples are also kind of strange, as well as proving the point for my team. So first of all, I'm going to start with some points of contention for the House. So uh, the opposition said that uh, my first speaker probably felt marginalized because the president in her country is currently from the majority. And that is why she's being discriminated against or marginalized in school. But when President Obama was uh, president of the United States, did racism magically stop in the United States? It didn't, right? Black people didn't just magically start to have the same opportunities as people, as white people, right? Did they magically just, you know, did racism just magically end when he became president? No, it continued. In fact, people probably abused him for it. But let's, let, let me just continue. Uh, another point they said was, you know, rich people don't really understand how poor people feel. That's why they can't really represent them. But do you really have to experience something to understand it, to, to want to help, right? Uh, when women were given the rights to vote, when black people were given the rights to vote, it was all white people in parliament, but they were still given the right to vote, right? Because they had this obligation, a social obligation that was upheld by society to do their jobs. And that's the way our political system in many of the co uh, countries in the world is is uh, structured, that's, the way, that's why it's structured like that. So that they, they're obligated to do their jobs regardless of their race, gender, language, anything. And that is why, you know, uh, presidents all over the world are, you know, uh, they represent everyone. And a, a president shouldn't have to represent one part of the society. And when you, and when you put someone who's marginalized in that spot, that means that you are expecting them to only represent the marginalized because the only reason you're putting them up there is because they're marginalized. So this entire motion means that uh, best leaders coming from the margins of society is really uh, insinuating that only the marginalized should be represented. But, major the, but the majority uh, actually really want have to represent everyone. And what we're saying on our side is that anyone can represent anyone and it shouldn't be that marginalized people are representing the marginalized and the majority are representing the, major uh, the majority because that's just a flawed system. Everyone has to represent everyone. That's how, that's how, you, that's how, it becomes, that's how presidents and everyone beca become popular over the world to use their slightly flawed definition of best leaders. And uh, another, point they, another point I'd just like to make is that perhaps the marginalized may not have the leadership qualities everyone in the world is looking for because, you know, they're usually minorities, which means when they grew up, they wouldn't have had as many chances to be leaders. They wouldn't have been given, you know, the, the student council blazer from the beginning because, you know, obviously they were marginalized. That's the whole point, which means they didn't develop those skills as a child, which means perhaps the majority are Able to, uh, able to carry out those roles more effectively and have better resources to be able to do that. For all these reasons and more, I'm incredibly proud to be on the negative side. Thank you very much. Affirmative team, you have one minute to prepare. Noble philosopher Richard Paul Evans once wisely stated, roses can grow in the slums just as weeds can grow around mansions. Need I mention the rose that grew from the concrete? 
Honorable adjudicators, I, Sierra Sweeting, from the beautiful archipelago of the Bahamas, will now dismantle the fallacious claims presented by my worthy opponents today. Firstly, it is imperative that we understand that although the term best is subjective, there is still a high standard in which these world leaders must maintain. My opponents, who are you? to invalidate the personal and traumatic experiences of those marginalized individuals. This would be utterly ridiculous, inhumane and barbaric. Fidel Castro, Hitler, and even Donald Trump, they have no idea what it's like to be treated as outcasts. So how do you suppose that they will empathize with individuals who have been discriminated against and marginalized. Surely, the experiences of those once marginalized leaders will enable them to effectively serve, provide, protect, and lead every class of people, middle, high, or lower class. They understand what it's like, and no matter how hard my opponents may try, you cannot invalidate this point. A famous aphorism reads as follows. From humble beginnings come great things. First speaker, we are not saying that great leaders don't come from the middle class, but rather we are saying that the best leaders come from the margins of society. Let's not diverge from the moot now. You stated that the leaders from the majority care about the majority and will be able to serve the majority. After all, what about the minorities? Didn't you say that you are a part of a minority group in the United States of America? Hmm. <laughs> additionally, 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 Bill Gates is simply only one example of the rich donating, giving to the poor, not leading. <laughs> this point is quite porous, and there are many loopholes that I can go into. Second speaker, Although racism never stopped in, the, in America, did the Caucasians have the audacity to voice their racist and misogynistic opinions? Were schools being shot up? Need I remind you that Donald Trump has been accused of a plethora of racist Twitter remarks and over 20 different sexual offenses? He is from the majority. Is he the best? Is that what you are implying? The best, the best leaders should not be centered around the amount of money they have, the class they come from, but rather the compassion that they have for all classes of people, especially the marginalized. Otherwise, this would be quite shallow if we were to base their, leader, their leadership abilities on the class they came from. Once again, Roses can grow in the slums, just as weeds can grow around mansions. Hold your breath and think again. The best leaders certainly come from the margins of society. And here is where I rest my case. All right, thank you so much. Debaters, you have one minute to prepare. And the time is up. We now welcome to the stage the third speaker on the negative team. Honorable panelists, esteemed associates of the oppositioning team, and my fellow teammates, my name is Julia Tan Lang, and I'm from the British School of Yangon. Today, I will be representing the third and second final speaker on the negative team, and we, as the negative, proudly urge you to oppose this motion. As you know, today's debate motion is that the best leaders come from the margins of society, and we, as the negative team, stand with strong disapproval upon this motion. First, I would like to begin with the, re the rebuttals. The first speaker has stated that we do not come from the margins, but we can be great people. Exactly. Sometimes the best people do not need to come from the margins in order to be a good leader or a good person. My teammates have discussed the points of internalized oppression, but as well as it having representing a wider variety. And I will be speaking about how the best leaders can come from anywhere. First, let's look at the definition of the word leader. A person who leads or commands a group, 
organization or country. Let's look at the definition of what a good or be best leader would mean. True leaders both know and communicate their values openly with the people they've had. They lead, creating an atmosphere of certainty and trust. They have integrity. While the negative team is in no way stating that people who are marginalized have no integrity or look after everyone, or do not know and communicate their values openly, leaders do have the responsibility to look after everyone, which includes marginalized people. But they do not have to be from the margins to represent everyone. The negative spoke about some of the best examples of marginalized leaders who ended up benefiting the world, but have not yet added that they have not always been the best leaders. Let's look at one example they've given. According to the ALCCU, there was a 64% growth in economic spying by the United States government during Obama's first term. The Obama administration argued in federal court in 2012 that the public has no reasonable expectation of privacy regarding their cell phone location data, and the government can obtain these records without a warrant. Further blemishing Obama's record on civil liberties, his administration greenlighted a giant government database of information on millions of citizens who aren't suspected of terrorism or anything at all. In May 2017, we also found out that Obama's National Security Agency had been conducting illegal searches on Americans for years and was rebuked by the Foreign Intelligence Service Surveillance Court. I'm not saying, the negative team is not saying that Obama wasn't a good leader, wasn't a bad leader, but he certainly isn't a good leader either. Let's look at another example, Gandhi. Many were troubled by his idiosyncratic ways, which we now know included sexually aber aberrant behavior. Very people knew about his dangerous experiments to test his willpower and ability to withstand sexual temptation. One of those experiments included sleeping naked with his teenage grand nieces, Manu and Abba. While we understand that marginalized people undergo struggles the privileged don't, if this is what the world calls a stain, isn't this too inhumane? You can't take bad examples from history and use that to generalize the entire community. That includes the margins. Good leaders do not have to have a lot of audience to be deemed good. To conclude, I would like to end with summarizing my main point. Marginalized people aren't always bad people, but they aren't good people either. Thank you. Thank you, negative third speaker. Affirmative team, you have one final minute to prepare. Scholars, can we give a huge round of applause to the last speaker for the affirmative team of today's debate? Good afternoon. Negative team, affirmative team, judges, and ladies and gentlemen. The affirmative team strongly stands by the resolution that those who come from the margins are the better leaders. Do you wish to ignore their ability to represent those who have been subdued? Do you wish to ignore their ability to place a gag in the mouths of those whom we ignore? Do you wish to ignore their experience? Do you wish to ignore the public approval? Do you wish to ignore the lists that state simply, do you wish to ignore those who we idolize? Do we not idolize Gandhi? Do we not idolize Obama? Speaker one for the, affirm for the negative team stated that leaders are important. As the affirmative team, we strongly agree with this. Yes, leaders are important. So why do we not have those in the most important jobs in the world represent all of us? Leaders have obligations to represent the entire society. They have obligations to represent the people. So why do they not? All leaders are obligated to represent the people. All leaders are obligated to represent those whom they do not come from. We are not arguing their obligation. We are arguing the literal presence of their ability to do so. Our leaders from the majority are great. Donald Trump is great. Ask the aliens, ask the children sleeping on the floor, ask those with enough debt to cause a family to miss meals, and they will say otherwise. <laughs> Speaker one, sorry, I beg your pardon. Speaker three for the negative team stated that Obama participated in economic spying. 
Are you stating that, that the economy of America is not corrupt? Are you stating that the wealth of that the American wealth is owned by 10 families, a majority of the wealth is owned by the top 0.1%, do you not argue a requirement for a market that represents those who simply cannot get called for an interview, who simply cannot get a job, who cannot come out of the debt that they are placed in due to the leaders that you have elected? Speaker, speaker 3 from the negative team stated that Obama was not a good leader. Speaker 3 from the, from the negative team stated that Obama was not a good person. No reasons were presented for Obama's lack of ability to be a good leader. We are not arguing Obama's ability to be a good person. We are arguing his ability to represent the people whom have elected him. We are arguing his ability to represent society. The leaders whom come from the majority, the leaders whom come from those who are at the center of society, are leaders whom will represent those people. Leaders who come from those who have been excluded, leaders who come from those who have not been given representation, who have been oppressed, who have been silenced from their ability to show their compassion, to show their ability to lead everybody, have not been given a chance. Do you want to ask those who simply cannot speak? Do you want to ask those who simply cannot raise their hand and protest to something because they are not allowed to have a voice? Do you not, do you not wish to represent those who do not have the opportunity to receive the representation that they seek? The affirmative team strongly stands by the, re re the resolution that leaders who are elected from the minority and leaders who are elected from the margins will make the best leaders, will make the most, the, will make the leaders with the ability to represent. And if you wish to represent those who do not have the voice, who do not have the ability, then you see eye to eye with the affirmative team. Thank you so much for that, scholars. Before we hear from the last speaker for the negative team, you have one minute to prepare. And now we welcome to the stage our final speaker of the debate showcase. Please approach the front of the room. In our current society, we need a world in which we're not getting leaders in just from these tiny segregated communities. We need leaders who represent everyone. Hello. My name is Xavier, I am from New Zealand, St Andrews College, and today I will be your final speaker of the debate and the final speaker of the negative team. I will be providing points of clash between our two teams, and I will also be providing rebuttal, which I will get onto now. Firstly, Obama, one of the most brought up people of this debate today. And I, what a lot of people seem to forget is that Obama was not a perfect leader because he was marginalized. People are not perfect leaders simply because they are marginalized. Marginalization does not define leadership, and that's something we have to remember when we're discussing this debate. <laughs> what we also need to say is we need to look back to the past at things, as previously mentioned by the negative team, like New Zealand. We learned today that New Zealand was the first place in the world to give, um, to give women the right to vote. And who gave this? White males. Surprising, right? Because they don't represent the minorities, they don't represent the marginalized, they only represent themselves. That is completely incorrect. Now, we come on to one of the true issues of this debate which has hardly been brought up, the definition of a best leader being the most popular. Do you really think that the best leaders are the most popular? Let's look at George W. Bush, who was not really that popular of a leader for most of his time, about 50%, but post 9-11, 85% popularity. Popularity is something which changes so much that we cannot simply define our leaders by how popular they are. That is something that we cannot do and is wrong. What we also have to remember is Bill Gates, as previously mentioned, they believed that he wasn't a leader. But the thing is, a leader does not just have to be someone 
who's in government. A leader can be someone who is leading by example, by leaving 99% of their money to charity when they die. That is what a leader is, someone who will encourage others to do this. We also want to come up, bring up again surrounding popularity, that being the most popular does not make you the best. Let us look at Donald Trump, another one of the people who has been brought up today again and again and again, and he did not win the popular vote. He is not the most popular. We have to remember these things. They are important. Now I'm going to come onto my main points of clash, of which today I have two, being, give me a moment, Firstly, do those from non-marginalized communities understand the marginalized? And I would say yes, every human has empathy within them. Everyone truly is able to understand what it feels like. We might not be able to understand truly as well as some other people, but we can empathize, we can try and help, we can do what we can, and that is what we need to do. Secondly, can those who are not marginalized still represent the marginalized? And we would like to say, if you are not willing to represent the marginalized, then you are not a leader. A leader is someone who is compassionate. A leader is someone who cares. And if you are not willing to represent the marginalized, you do not care, and you are therefore not a leader. In conclusion, if you believe that only the marginalized can be a leader, that only these people can be the best leaders, you're wrong. Everyone can be a leader, no matter where you come from, even if you do come from the majority. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this great debate. Scholars, can we put our hands together one more time for this team of great debaters sitting right in front of us today? And now, we have heard from the speakers here on stage, but it's time to hear a little bit from you guys. In front of the aisles here, we have two stations for the community forum. Before I invite speakers down, let me remind you, this is not a chance for you to give feedback to the speakers on stage, but rather is a chance for you to share your ideas on this topic with the community. Please keep your remarks for the community forum brief. Do not begin with, I have two things to say. You only have one thing to say. So. For those of you who want to provide insight, please join us in a nice orderly line down here at the front of the aisles with Marissa and Colby. They can wave. So, please join us while I lead our panel of judges to the super secret judging chamber. All right, once the panel of judges is led out by Logan, we will begin with our first speaker over here with Marissa. What are you doing? Are you something like All right, let's hear from you first. So so the f fourth speaker of the negative team, they said that a couple of qualities a leader must have is to be compassionate and represent everyone, and that if they don't have these qualities, then they're no leader. Does this mean that Trump technically isn't a leader? Okay, thank you very much for that. All right, moving on over to the next side. Hi, I'm Russell from the same school as Figo. Now, um, from the affirmative team, uh, one of the points that they stated was that marginalized people would make better leaders because of the experiences that they've suffered through. However, um, it has been shown in history that sometimes when leaders have suffered through certain experiences, it makes them a bit rash and makes their decision making much worse. An example would be the reign of terror in the French Revolution when they started cutting everyone's heads off or the Bolshevik Revolution where they again started killing people and starving Ukrainians and the Chinese Revolution which Mao Zedong was very bad. <laughs> but yeah, um, that was just one of the points I'd like to point out. 
Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Let's give him a round of applause. Now back to Marissa's side. Um, so my question is to the affirmative team. If we, if we limit the success rates of leadership skills or individuals and compare those who are marginalized, aren't we marginalizing the individuals with the average life? Are some of us today who aren't marginalized groups not capable of being great leaders? Must we limit our options to aim for mar marginalization in order to be great leaders? And um, this last speaker for the affirmative said that marginalization, mar marginalized leaders needed to be represented. Although the motion is not about being represented, it's about great leaders. So can we? So what can you say that? Um, so, how, so what can you say about these equal opportunities? Thank you very much for that question, scholars. Let's give her a round of applause. And now, let's hear from the other side. Hi, um, I'm Tiffany from Canberra Girls Grammar School. Um, I think that something that else that could have been further focused on rather than just looking at, um, you know, people of colour, you could have also looked at the fact that uh, members of the LGBT community and also women face quite a bit of, uh, like, oppression and struggle when it comes to getting into places of leadership. And I think using uh, the New Zealand Prime Minister was a good idea, but also going a bit further into that. All right, thank you very much. Scholars, let's give her a round of applause. And now back to Marissa's side. So um, what I want to say is uh, the fourth speaker, was the final speaker of the affirmative team, said that why do you want to ignore the ability of the poor? My question is why do you want to ignore the ability of the rich? Each and every guy over here, we have an example in front of us. These people in the World Scholars Cup, you, all the debaters from the affirmative team, you are so good. You can be the best, best debaters, but that doesn't mean that you have to be from the marginalized group. That doesn't mean that you have to be poor. You can be rich and you can be the best leader. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now back to the other side. Hi, I'm Serena from Canberra Girls Grammar School. Um, and so in our debate today, I thought there was a lot of talk about, um, you know, uh, how being a leader was representation, and I thought that was really good. Um, one thing I thought was it came out a bit late, but I also thought that we needed, um, one thing I thought was that we needed to have a lot more talk about what uh, qualities there were of a leader that wasn't just like physical representation, like I'm a female, that's not the most important thing about me. I might also be compassionate, I might be generous, I might also have like a drive, I might also um, be a forward thinker, and I think we needed to identify like um, what actually gave me those qualities. It is it wasn't being like an Asian female, being marginalized, that gave me those qualities. It was maybe my upbringing, it was maybe, you know, how I was uh, programmed genetically, and I thought that was what was most important, and I think that needed to come out. Thank you. Thank you very much, scholars. Let's give her a round of applause. And now back to Marissa's side. So I just wanted to say something in support of the negative side. I think we can't put someone with tunnel vision as the watchman of the entire country, because they would often just see a certain perspective bias towards what they experience from being marginalized. We often idealize marginalized leaders because of what they've done, but I feel like we just perfect them over time, and in reality, we just kind of hide their flaws, which is why I, uh, that's just something I want to say to support the negative side. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, so... Uh, so, the second affirmative speaker said that... Uh, Marginalized people had ne never had leadership opportunities when they were young, so uh, why why uh, so society should be more inclusive of them? Uh, wait, why should they be deprived of opportunities because they were when they were younger? So uh, does it mean that they, because they have no experience when they were younger of a leader, they c they shouldn't be a leader now? Thank you very much for asking that question. Now back to Marissa's side. Hi, I'm Aisha from Pakistan representing Beacon Light Academy. I would just like to add that it seemed like other countries were being marginalized here because we were only talking about the United States of America. And first, and secondly, I would sa just say that it is not easy to change the map of the world. And my own leader, Qaid Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah, actually did that. And supporting the affirmative side, he was a Muslim in a country where four times Hindus were there. And we changed the map and we stand here as Pakistanis. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, scholars. Let's give her a round of applause. And now back to Colby's side. Uh, my name is Mujit Min. I'm uh, from Hannah Story School. 
And I just want to say that you guys shouldn't bring controversial figures and focus so much time on it, such as Trump and Obama, because to successfully use that as an example, you have to have a much longer debate than this. Thank you very much. But scholars, can we please remember not to provide feedback to the debaters? Now moving back on to Marissa's side. I won't say my name, but you can call me 484C. I'm from Hanoi, Amsterdam School in Hanoi. I believe that this motion, I'm standing neutral in this motion. I believe that what you believe is the needs that your country need. For example, my country is Vietnam, which economic state is in um, the lower middle half of the world. Like, it's not really great. So a good leader is someone who can provide a lot of qualities. I think that you guys are focusing a lot on the representation in this world. So, yeah. Um, okay, thank you everybody. once again. And may I once again point out, please refrain from providing feedback to the debaters. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Hong Tan Zhang and I'm from St. Nicholas International School. And I just want to say that I feel like the negative team have left out a really basic but interesting point. And that is um, that the affirmative team keep bringing up controversial um, political figures such as Donald Trump, who obviously have issues against marginalized people. However, they could also mention someone who is an important um, figure in the US history, who is Abraham Lincoln. And that is, he is a white man, and he is also a president once of the United States, and he is the guy who um, freed all black slaves in the America. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much, scholars. Let's give a round of applause. Unfortunately, we have run out of time and the panel of judges is, I believe, ready to provide us with the answer that we're all waiting for. Who is the winner of this debate? Is this on? I think it is. Um, do I like start? Stop, stop, stop. stop. Okay. Um, so today we debated a very interesting topic, one that came out with, I believe, three main clashes. Um, that being, does being rich immediately have a direct causality towards um, making someone understand the margins? Where um, we believe that the affirmative did an amazing job of really providing examples and making it exceptionally clear that um, leadership can come from anywhere, but particularly the margins, which linked very well to the topic. Um, clash two, um, the difference between an understanding and an experience and which is best in terms of leadership. Um, the affirmative did a great job of bringing up the point of um, empathy and again providing examples. Everything was very linked into reality um, and there was a good causality between the two. There was great examples, quotes, etc. Uh, clash three, what is the um, definition of the best or what makes a best leader? Um, the affirmative came out with the idea that it, they carry out roles, um, that it's subjective and relative towards the community. Um, and we believe that this was very good towards the overall notion, giving um, yeah, a different perspective to, I think, what we would have expected. And so that was really refreshing to see out of the affirmative. Right. Hello, hello. So my feedback is mainly on the negative side, as all the clashes has, has already been addressed through the previous uh, judges. So I'm going to go straight into the content from the negative side. So the negative side, we see a lot of cohesion between all the speeches. And especially from the last speaker from the negative side, we see he pop up with something that really uh, marked this debate or really brought up this debate is that what a best leader or what leader what the exact definition should be. And I think that across the, all the debates, very strong rebuttals, very organized speeches, and very fluent uh, delivery overall. And yes, a very good debate. We enjoy, our panel enjoyed very lot. And we'll pass it to announce it, the result. OK, so now it's time to announce the winner. So after a lot of deliberation, 
It was very tough for us to decide between the affirmative and the negative side. It was, we had a lot of time to discuss the motion. And our verdict is, can we have a drum roll, please? <laughs> it is the negative. Okay. Scholars, make some noise for the affirmative, the negative, and the judges here on stage. And as per tradition, debaters on stage, please rise, cross the table, and congratulate one another. Scholars, one more time, get up for all the debaters on stage. <laughs>